I've been using the Pulsar X2 V2 for a few weeks now, and I gotta say, I'm a fan. Before we jump into the nitty gritty, let's talk about packaging. The box showcases the mouse's model, size options, and key features. Speaking of sizes, it comes in large, medium, or mini. What mouse size do you prefer? I went for the medium and I'm pretty glad I did. Inside the box, you'll find the mouse, a sleek USB type C to type A cable, complete with a smart design to prevent cable drag. And surprise, surprise, there's even stickers, a quick start guide, and a Pokemon card? Because why not, I guess? Just so everyone will be on the same page, you can purchase the X2 V2 with either the standard 1000 Hz pulling rate dongle or the 4K pulling rate dongle out of the box. The version with the 4K variant is a little more expensive, but it's no more expensive than if you were to buy the dongle on your own. Now let's talk about numbers. Pulsar claims it's 53 grams, but my scale says 55 grams. And I weighed two different X2 V2s, one with super glides and one without. This isn't a deal breaker, but it's worth noting. Up until this point, the lightest mouse I was daily driving regularly was the Lamzu Atlantis Mini. And that mouse was great. No complaints here, but the Pulsar X2 V2 just hits different, man. I wouldn't say any of the mice I own have a similar shape to the Pulsar X2 V2, much like how the Razer Death Adder has its own unique shape, the X2 V2 does as well. The body is made from a smooth plastic, reminiscent of the Logitech Superlight. The X2 V2 is ambidextrous and completely symmetrical. I've only met one left-handed mouse user in my entire life. He had the weirdest setup for gaming. If you're watching this and you use the mouse with your left hand, leave a comment about how you use your setup. I'm so curious. The X2 V2 measures in at length 4.72 inches, width 2.48 inches, and height 1.5 inches. Here it is compared against the Logitech Superlight and the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. Pulsar describes this shape as a wide waist, low hump profile and lists the best grip styles for this mouse as fingertip or claw. If you hold your mouse this way, it means you never kissed anyone. The hump starts sloping up where the logo is visible from the top. For me, I feel the hump mostly around the lower portion of my finger right here. Right here, this is where I feel the hump. I'm not sure I find it as comfortable as the Logitech Superlight profile, but it's still pretty dang comfy to me. The mouse paddles have compound concave indentations on them, and you'll definitely feel them in your fingertips. Let me explain with a short demonstration. What we're going to do is take a small flat object and run it over the top of each mouse paddle. You'll be able to see the negative space between the flat object and the paddle. This gives you an idea of the indent curvature. You can see the indent change over the length of the paddles. This might not be for everybody, but like I said, it's got its own unique shape. Hey, let me tell you something real quick. If you've been enjoying the content I make and you want to help me make more, then consider clicking that little subscriber button there. Thanks. I appreciate it. Now, uh, back to the review. We get five optical mouse buttons and one DPI selector button. The DPI selector will also make this one LED change color to indicate which profile you're on. The LED turns red when you charge it via the USB type C header on the front of the mouse. You love to see it. Since the switches are optical, we don't have to worry about any double clicks or any issues like that. I would describe all the optical switches as tactile. None of the buttons sound muted in any way. For anyone curious, here's a short sound sample. The optical switches are made by Resha, 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 Resha. Resha makes optical switches for a few other mouse brands. Most notably, they make Razer's optical switches. What's interesting about the X2 V2 is that the M3 button is a Huano switch and not Resha like the rest of the mouse. So far, they've worked completely fine for me. No issues. The sensor is the Pixart 3395. The maximum DPI is 26,000. This is a good sensor, but it isn't exactly special that that this particular mouse has it. There are a bunch of other mice on the market with this same exact sensor. The cheapest mouse you can get in with the 3395 is like 50 bucks. So, you know, make of that what you will. The highest pulling rate you can achieve using the 2.4 gigahertz dongle is 1000 hertz. There is a maximum pulling rate of 4000 hertz, but you do need to purchase the additional 4K dongle for $20. The battery roughly provides 100 hours of charge using the 1000 hertz pulling rate. Using the 4K 
pulling rate, I'd say you could probably expect about half of that. Either way, this isn't bad to me because I just plug my mouse in before I go to sleep. This is a PSA. You can charge your wireless mouse when it's connected to your PC and the PC is off. The more you know. The mouse software is called Pulsar Fusion, and it's a very lightweight piece of software. On Pulsar Fusion, you can do what you'd expect by today's standards. On the button assignment page, you can reprogram all five buttons, not the DPI selector button though, turn motion sync on or off, adjust your debounce timings and auto shut off. On the performance tab, you can adjust the DPI and pulling rate. On the flip side, something that's neat is you can adjust the mouse sensitivity independent of the DPI. This way, you can max out the resolution your sensor has and still have a usable mouse sensitivity. I haven't seen other manufacturers do this and I thought this was worth mentioning. You can also adjust your lift off distance, turn on angle snapping, or most importantly, adjust the RGB effect on your one LED. I like the breathing mode. On the last tab, you can create custom macros. They have a record feature with this, which is nice to see. And does anybody in our community regularly use mouse macros? What are some that you have used that have improved improved your quality of life. Overall, I've really enjoyed using the Pulsar X2 V2, and it's definitely the type of mouse I would recommend for friends to try. If you're somebody who's in the gaming community who values a really fast, lightweight mouse, then this may be the one for you. Best of all, this mouse comes at a super affordable and fair price. For comparison, you're getting about the same amount of features, possibly even less, using the Logitech Superlight. And even then, you're getting a heavier mouse and paying $160 for it. The only thing you may not like is the shape. And it's really a gotta try it for yourself type of shape. Luckily, all Pulsar mice have a 30 day return period and a two year limited warranty. Mouse shape is something incredibly subjective and unfortunately Unfortunately, with this mouse, it isn't as easy as walking into a Best Buy and trying it out. As always, I hope you learned something, and until next time, GG.